Maybe someone will talk, and even if they don't want to talk. Well, what'd you write about? You want me to give you my quote? Sure. But uh, it was the one when Sonny's talking to his older brother when he asks him after their mom dies. He's asking uh -huh. what he wants to do with his life, and then he says, um, he said something like. What else are people on this earth for other than to do what they want to do? Mm -hmm. And that kind of spoke to me because, I mean, he had a good point. The brother, the older brother, may not have been doing something that he necessarily liked to do. And although Sonny, like, struggled real bad, you know, with drugs uh -huh. and stuff, he was doing something that he actually loved. Okay, yeah, what, what, what do we get? Let's actually take that and sort of shift the focus here to the narrator for a minute, right? Since this might actually be a good place to start. What can we tell about this guy? Not yet about his personality, right? What can we tell just about his general life circumstances, right? You know, who is he? What are his character, basic characteristics? He's a teacher. Okay, yeah, he's a teacher. What does he teach? Math. Yeah, he's a math teacher. What else can we tell about him? Yeah. Ex army. Good. He's the older brother. Yep. Older brother. A father. Yep. He's a father. Right. Two sons. One daughter. One daughter deceased. What else? Yeah. He still lives in the complex? Yeah, he still lives in the neighborhood where he grew up, right? Can you, do you know what neighborhood that is, or what neighborhood he's talking about? Harlem. Yeah, he's talking about Harlem in uptown Manhattan, right? Do any of you know anything about Harlem, about the history of Harlem, about, you know, at the primary ethnic mix? It's very music oriented, but it's really bad. Well, yeah, it's, it's been traditionally, right, traditionally poor, traditionally mostly African-American, but there is also a vibrant art culture associated with it, right? So, yeah, traditionally mostly poor, mostly African-American, but it does also have, right, I'm sure, like, a lot of you probably learned in high school about the Harlem Renaissance, right? Okay, yeah, a lot of writers, poets, painters, musicians um, sort of came through Harlem, in the early 20th century, right? But by the time this guy is writing, um, that's largely over with, right? We're looking here at sort of like a post World War II, here, like sort of think like sort of like 1940s, 1950s. And does this narrator seem like he's the sort of person who would even be all that interested in any kind of art culture? How does he seem to feel about music or about art in general? He feels a waste of time. Yeah. How are you going to make your living at that, right? It's not practical. So that's another thing we can probably say about his basic personality, right? That he's practical or thinks he is. Now, if we think a little bit about like his attitudes towards other people, the way he behaves with other people, the way he acts in his environment. How does he seem to feel about his job and about his students? When he got to thinking about his brother, he, like the day he found out that he got busted and everything, he started looking at his students like, uh -huh. at him almost. Okay. May have already been doing drugs and stuff. Yeah. So his attitude towards his students is largely one kind of, of suspicion, right? Mm -hmm. Right. When these boys go off to the restroom, what are they really doing, right? What's going on in there? But does he care enough to actually find out? No. 
What does he think about his students' future prospects? Does he think any of these boys are going to amount to anything? No. Not so much. If we look at um, sort of near the first page of the story, right? It's page 67 in this book. It might be different in the one you have. Right. I was sure that the first time Sonny had ever had horse, he couldn't have been much older than these boys were now. These boys now were living as we'd been living then. They were growing up with a rush, and their heads bumped abruptly against the low ceiling of their actual possibilities. Right? He does not think these boys are going anywhere in life, right? And does he think it's necessarily their fault? Now, he imagines that what's, what happened to him and Sonny, what they went through as children, is going to repeat itself in these boys. What about the place where, does he live in Harlem because he likes living in Harlem? How can we tell how he feels about it? How does he seem to feel about his neighborhood? I think um, when his brother asked um, to ride by the park, uh -huh. he was like, he didn't really want to, but he did it anyways to make his brother happy. So that kind of suggests that he didn't really care to see my clothes at home. Yeah, well, I mean, he's, he sees the neighborhood every day, right? And what Sonny really wants is to see Central, to drive by Central Park, right? Um, I used to, I, I used to live um, on 116th Street and First, which is sort of like the very lower edge of what's sometimes called Spanish Harlem. It's a mostly Puerto Rican Dominican neighborhood, um, but uh, you know, you essentially like you know Harlem is several blocks above Central Park, and Central Park is kind of like right in like upper middle Manhattan. So if you think of like the island, it's shaped sort of like this. Central Park would be about here. That's all, you know, nice and well-groomed and lovely. And, you know, there are, you know, rocks and trees and little walking paths and a zoo. It's great. And Harlem is more sort of like up here, right? So I'm trying to draw some indication of sort of crisscrossing streets, and I'm a shitty artist, so it doesn't quite work out. But you, you get my meaning, right? So they're going sort of like up past the park to the top of the island. And the neighborhood, as he describes it, looks very, very different from the kind of lush, green, attractive park and the desirable homes that are around it. So if somebody can find the passage before I do, please do. Okay, in the orange book, it's page 98. In the green one, it's page 73. So we drove along between the green of the park and the stony, lifeless elegance of hotels and apartment buildings towards the vivid, killing streets of our childhood. Right, the fact that he refers to the streets of his neighborhood as killing streets should tell us something about the way he feels about it, right? And I would argue that it tells us less about the neighborhood itself than it tells us about him and how he feels about it. <coughs> These streets hadn't changed, though housing projects jutted up out of them now like rocks in the middle of a boiling sea. Most of the houses in which we had grown up had vanished, as had the stores from which we had stolen, the basements in which we had first tried sex, the rooftops from which we had hurled tin cans and bricks, but houses exactly like the houses of our past, yet dominated the landscape. Boys exactly like the boys we once had been found themselves smothering in these houses, came down into the streets for light and air, and found themselves encircled by disaster. Some escaped the trap, most didn't. So what's the feeling that he associates with, the, with his neighborhood? What's the big theme we see in, in this paragraph? Pardon, Shaking? Um, I was about to say, I guess he doesn't think like it's a place where you're going to get opportunity. That if you um, stay mm -hmm. there, then you're going to go into like a destructive stage, I guess. And um, mm -hmm. that's, well, yeah, that's pretty much. Well, what, what's the what's the big thing he notes about the neighborhood there? Right? Despite the fact that they've built new housing projects, that's still the same. Yeah, yeah nothing same. changes, right? Nothing here, in his eyes, really changes. He tends to view it in terms of stagnation, right? Yeah. 
even you know the boys he sees running around the neighborhood. What does he note about the boys in the neighborhood now? That um, they are they are pretty much a standing image of how human sons are looking. Yeah, even the even the boys are just like we were, right? The people are the same. The place is the same. Nothing here ever changes. And those who do get out leave some piece of themselves here, right? Those who got out always left something of themselves behind as some animals amputate a leg and leave it in the trap. It might be said, perhaps, that I had escaped, after all. I was a school teacher, or that Sonny had. He hadn't lived in Harlem for years. But both of them are, in fact, sort of trapped or caged by not even, I would say not even so much by the place or by the neighborhood, but by other things. But this also indicates to us something else about the narrator, right? One of the big patterns that you see going through the story, the first pattern I noticed when I first read this story, when the narrator looks at another person, what does he always see in that other person? Is it Sonny specifically that he sees when he looks at other people? Let's look at the first example right, is when that friend of Sonny's he something about his eyes. comes up to him. Yeah, he says something about the guy's eyes, that the guy's you know, eyes look yellow, show the dirt in his hair. But if we look a little bit before that, right? I couldn't stand the way he looked at me, partly like a dog, partly like a cunning child. I wanted to ask him what the hell he was doing in the school courtyard. He sort of shuffled over to me and he said, I see you got the paper so you already know about it. You mean about Sonny? Yes, I already know about it. How come they didn't get you? He grinned. It made him repulsive. It also brought to mind what he'd looked like as a kid. And then a little bit further down, he's watching that barmaid dancing in the window, right? When she smiled, one saw the little girl. One sensed the doomed, still struggling woman beneath the battered face of the semi-whore, right? So when he looks at other people, any other people pretty much, what does he always see in them? The past? The childhood? Yeah, it's always their past, like that child still inside them, right? He sees the child that remains within the adult. So for this guy, the past is always intruding on the present. Now this is actually relevant to the way the story is set up. Do we get a straight chronological narration of events? Like first this happened, then this happened, then this happened, then this happened. It's in a flashback. Yeah, we get a lot of flashback here, right? A lot of the narrator thinking back to childhood or thinking back to um, previous conversations with dead relatives or with Sonny, right? So much of the important stuff here, much of the meat of the story, is stuff that has happened in the past that's related kind of in the middle. And this is where it's important to understand here the distinction between plot and story. Right, when we talk about the story, typically what we mean is the chronological series of events. So if we looked at the, st the story that this tells, right? We have, you know, the narrator makes a promise to his mother to look after his brother at his father's funeral. The brother tells me he wants to be a musician. Older brother laughs at his ambitions, or at the very least doesn't understand them, goes off to the army, comes back, brother has been living as a musician in the village and shooting heroin. They have a fight. They don't speak for a while. Younger brother gets picked up for heroin. 
older brother's daughter dies, writes a letter to younger brother, and they decide to at least start communicating again. Younger brother comes to live with older brother. Older brother goes to jazz club with younger brother, right? That's the story. That's the straight chronological series of events. When we talk about the plot, we talk about the way the events are related to us, right? The actual arrangement of events in the text. And this goes, as we noted, back and forth in time quite a bit. Yeah, right. I was getting confused a little bit. Okay. okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's sometimes hard to know exactly what's going on when, right? But yeah, the, does it make sense to you now that when we sort of tease out this particular characteristic of the narrators, right, that he's kind of fixated on how the past intrudes on the present and how the past is always there, right, why he's always having these little flashbacks? Right. This is simply the this is simply the way this character thinks. Right. The past is always there. And that past is part of this this sort of stumbling block in his relationship with his brother. Now, what else can we say about this guy's fixation on childhood? Well, you know, you know why don't we why don't we try and uh, tease out some of the characteristics of sort of his primary foil here. Let's talk a little bit about Sonny. Let's talk a little bit about the younger brother. What's Sonny like? He seems free flowing, like he likes to um, just kind of um, do stuff that he thinks is, I guess I wouldn't say important, but uh, I don't know what's the word I'm looking for, but uh, he. He just likes to make his own decisions, I think, like, without, mm -hmm. anyone, without having to consult, you know, with anyone. Mm -hmm. I can't really put him into what Okay, well, and, and I, think we, I think we can sort of go back into the quote Aaron picked out, right? Mm -hmm. Where, um, <clears throat> you know, Sonny is explaining, it's like, you know, what, what else are we on this earth for except to do what we want? Right, so Sonny wants to do things his own way. And he resents the older brother trying to tell him what to do or to push him in any particular direction. For example, how does he feel about being told he's going to go and live with his brother's fiance's family? Not too excited about it. Yeah, not too excited about it. And, and what's, what's the biggest thing that irritates him about it? Yeah, it's like, you decided I was going to do this. Nobody asked me what I wanted. Right? Nobody asked me what I was going to do. Right? We know that he stops going to school.